It's a proud day for these Timorese soldiers. Each year on August 20th, the country marks Valentil Day, in tribute of the former guerrilla army's role in resisting the Indonesian occupation. Valentil is the Portuguese acronym for the Armed Forces for the Liberation of East Timor, the predecessor of Timor-Leste's Defense Force. The force, now called FFDTL, is made up of some 900 qualified Army and Naval personnel with nearly 800 more in training. It has come a long way since the days of being a national liberation movement fighting occupying Indonesian forces from 1975 till 1999. Within the walls of the former Balide prison in the capital Dili, hundreds of Timorese were detained and brutally tortured. Today, it houses the country's Commission for Reception, Truth, and Reconciliation, and a modest museum which chronicles the fight for independence on various fronts. Exiled Timorese kept up the pressure from abroad and lobbied the international community to help restore the country's independence. Myself, uh, Dr. Ramos Arta, currently the President of the Republic, and another friend, uh, Rogério Lobato, who was sent abroad uh, to set up, to, to really to set up this diplomatic uh, front. Uh, we tie our, did our best, uh, uh, particularly with this, uh, with this uh, support of the Portuguese-speaking countries in Africa, plus Portugal and Brazil. And, uh, we started uh, working in New York, New York particularly, uh, to, approve, to adopt a resolution against the, 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 uh, the annexation uh, and military, military aggression of Timor-Leste by the Suharto regime. Unable to fight the Indonesian army head-on, the Timorese resistance waged a guerrilla war from the jungle, enduring harsh living conditions and the constant threat of capture and death. Timor-Leste's leading opposition party, the Revolutionary Front for an Independent East Timor, better known as Fredolin, set up the Fallen Till Army as its military wing. Fredolin's current president, Francisco Guterres, better known as Lou Olo, spent over two decades fighting in the jungle, one of the few army commanders who evaded capture or being killed. During the Indonesian occupation, a staggering 300,000 people died, almost one-third of the small country's population. Among them was Nuno, the brother of Timorese President José Ramos Horta. On one of his visits to the countryside, President Ramos Horta stopped at a village in the southeastern district of Vikeke after receiving news that Nuno's grave might have been found. But on this day, the Nobel Peace Prize laureate left disappointed. There was not enough evidence to prove that the bones were his brothers, nor was he any closer to the truth surrounding Nuno's death. For years, much of what is known of the invasion was told through Timor Leste's leaders, individuals whose leadership and charisma have enabled them to rebuild a post-conflict Timor Leste. For all the progress made so far, there remains a large group of surviving guerrilla fighters who lost the best years of their lives to the war. With no access to education during the occupation, these veterans are illiterate and have few job prospects. 41-year-old Alfredo Rodriguez, codenamed Camaro, fought in the jungle throughout the occupation alongside famous guerrilla fighters, including current Prime Minister Zanana Guzmayo, And Camaro is already considered one of the lucky ones who escaped with their lives. But the freedom he fought so hard for has come at a high price. Mm -hmm. 
Like Camaro, Maria Rosa de Camara, codenamed Bisoy, was part of the resistance. She belonged to a small team of women who fought alongside the men. In recognition of their contributions to the country, war veterans receive up to 460 U.S. dollars a month in pensions if they fought throughout the entire occupation. As a full-service resistance fighter, Camaro now sits on a commission which evaluates veterans' claims. Established in 2002 by then-President Zainana Guzmara, the commission identifies veterans and assesses the extent of their contributions to the resistance. But determining who deserves a pension and how much is laborious. There are some 63,000 cases awaiting assessment. For some, the decision may come too late. A large number of veterans have yet to receive medical help for their wartime injuries, and many of them are now getting on in age. Bissoy herself only received treatment in 2008 after becoming a member of parliament. Doctors removed 11 bullets from her body in an operation which she paid for herself. <laughs> In a country where over 40% of the population still lives below the poverty line, the government says it's trying to find ways to help veterans. One possibility being discussed by the Department of Veteran Affairs is the creation of a federation to come up with forms of sustainable aid. Reminders of the country's grim past dot the countryside. Many still seek closure, searching for loved ones more than 10 years on. These are a people who have lost so much. We suffered in difficult times for so long, 24 years, and then they are continuing to suffer. That is why the definition of heroes, they are the real heroes. When the country needed, they gave themselves. Now, the country needs to move forward, they say, we are here. Just, they just say, don't forget us. A martyr can be a hero, maybe always a hero, but there are living heroes who use their wisdom, their intelligence to pursue a goal and achieve it. Uh, a lot of self-sacrifice. So these are the heroes. And these are many anonymous people who today are still not recognized, who today are still poor. In remembrance of those who died, the Timorese celebrate Heroes Day on December 7th each year. It's also the anniversary of the Indonesian invasion. Apart from the public holiday, a hero cemetery has been set up in Metinaro, just east of the capital. The government is also in talks to build a monument commemorating those who sacrificed their lives in the struggle for independence. In Timor-Leste, the past weighs heavily on the present. But in coming to terms with its history and according heroes their due, the future holds much promise for this young nation.